my name is Emma. I'm an artist and DIYer. Welcome to my channel. If you know me, you know I am a huge upcycler. I started on TikTok, but I've been trying to kind of transfer over some of my upcycles to YouTube as well. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upcycle old yarn. My great aunt Jan actually reached out to me and she said she had a whole box of yarn that she wanted to give me if I would have it. And of course I said yes, I am always in need of new supplies or used supplies, I should say. So she shipped me this huge box of yarn. So thank you so much to my Aunt Jan uh, for making this video happen. And I'm going to be using mostly her yarn in this video for upcycling today. I feel like it's really common to inherit boxes of yarn from your mom, your grandma, your great aunt, or find them at the thrift store, but not everyone knows how to knit or crochet. I technically know how to crochet, but I'm a terrible teacher, so I vowed to stop trying to do tutorials after I did several failed tutorials. But for this video, there is no crocheting, no knitting. It's upcycling yarn without any of that. But again, I did want to give a special thank you to my Aunt Jan for sending me this yarn that I'll be using in this video. There is plenty more of it, so I will probably be making more content like this. But let's get right into the video. This first one turned out so amazing, and all you need is cardboard, some hot glue, and obviously yarn to make it. It turned out so high-end, I made a squiggle wall hanging and I am absolutely in love with how it turned out. What's nice about this one is you can really play around with colors, get super creative, mess around with the different textures of yarn, and it was relatively simple to do. Here's how I made it. I started off with a piece of cardboard. The finished piece is gonna be about 18 inches wide, and then from the highest to the lowest parts, about 13 inches. I sketched this kinda M-ish shape, this squiggle shape, and something I wish I had done is measured at each point, which you'll see me doing later, because it's really important that the whole thing is the same width across. So I started cutting it out, cut the whole thing out with a combination of a box cutter and an X-Acto blade. And then at this point, I ended up doing three inches wide on every single angle. So all of it is three inches wide. And I would obviously learn from my mistakes and do the measuring first before you do the cutting. Then I grabbed these four different colors of yarn. This is the color palette I'm going for. And because there's a lot of beiges, I thought I would give my cardboard a base coat of this beige paint. You can also do the backside if you want to be fancy as well. And then I cut a bunch of yarn. I did eight feet of all of those pieces. I didn't end up using all of that yarn. So if you want to cut maybe seven of each of your different colors, I think that would be a good amount. You could always cut more, but I ended up doing eight feet of each of the pieces. And I had them all folded in half so I knew where the middle part was. And I took that middle part, lined it with what I felt like was the middle part of this cardboard piece. And that's what I glued first. And I went to the outside from the middle each time carefully hot gluing and kind of just gently, gently pressing it on. Now, as I got close to the end, I realized my measuring still wasn't perfect, but no worries. I just cut a little bit off and then finished it off with a few more pieces. And then I actually took some glue and glued the very, very edge. So it looks nice and professional. I did this on the top and the bottom. And then of course you can trim it laying down or once it's on the wall. I love the result. This is actually gonna be a permanent fixture in my home. I think it's so cool and modern. I love the textures. I kind of got funky with the yarn and didn't do like a pattern or anything. I did a bunch of random pieces and it's so cool. I love this one because of how simple the materials are and really how simple the technique is. You don't have to be an expert artist or crafter to execute this one. You can get super, super creative. Another alternative to the hot glue would be a technique I used in another video, which I'll link below, where I use double-sided tape instead of hot glue. And that might be a little bit easier for you. It definitely would be quicker, but it might not stay as well. So depending on what your goals are for this wall hanging, you can kind of choose what technique you want to use. But I think this wall hanging was well worth the effort. I love the way it looks and I love that I feel like it could fit into a modern home or a boho home, depending on the colors and textures. This next DIY I actually came up with a few years ago before I even started posting content online. It was definitely a need-based one. I wanted to hang some plants and 
macrame is kind of expensive and kind of difficult in my opinion. I hate the counting. So I decided to make some hanging planters out of yarn. I always have yarn laying around, so it was kind of a better alternative for me. And I just used braiding in this one, so it's super, super simple. I now have three of these and I absolutely love them. They're all different heights and again, really easy. Here's how I did it. For this planter, I'm actually gonna start by accessorizing it, which is optional. I'm going to make some matching polymer clay beads. I'm going for like a terracotta natural color. So I'm taking some gold pieces of polymer clay and I'm mixing it in with this translucent polymer clay. And then I also took some brown and I'm mixing it in there. This was totally experimental. <laughs> you could do whatever colors you want. I just think it's a fun addition to make polymer clay beads for your plant hangers and you can do whatever shapes you want anything anything you want so after i got those base colors in there i did add some of this copper color which i really really like this was kind of the goal i'm gonna choose some green yarn and i think this is going to complement it really well i then rolled it out and cut it into sections i will need at least nine sections you can add as many beads as you want but i ended up using nine and then i'm using just an old brush to stick it through the circle that I made and then I'm rolling it out. You wanna make sure the insides of these beads are really big if you want the yarn to be able to go through it. That's kind of why I like to make my own beads because most beads don't have big enough sections and you can customize the color, which is really nice. So I'm just rolling it through and kind of tapping it out. These are supposed to be really organic and not perfect. So I don't mind the texture and kind of the wonky shape. I then cut nine pieces of yarn to be 10 feet long. I know super long, this is going to be a 43 inch long planter. So I really like them to hang low. I have two different sizes of this and I don't want them to be the same exact size. You'll see at the end what I'm talking about, but it's going to be very long. It's a lot of yarn. All that green yarn you saw, I used all of it. And then I'm going to wrap my yarn around and make a knot. I'm doing this like invisible knot technique, but I really don't think it's necessary. You just want to wrap your yarn around and then tie it off. Then I'm going to take my yarn and separate it into three equal sections. And in those equal sections, I'm going to separate those into three equal sections. So two, two, and two. And then I'm gonna start braiding. I'm assuming most people know how to braid, but if you don't, you're taking the right side, putting it in the middle, and then you'll take the left side, put it in the middle, right side, middle, left side, middle. And then I'm just using a little clamp to section it off so they don't unravel while I'm doing the other side. So it's just simple braiding, but it looks really good. I feel like this is like a better version of macrame. I kind of struggle with macrame, but it's super important that as you're doing this, as you can see, I'm kind of pulling the yarn out because it will get tangled. So every three or four, I'm kind of straightening my yarn out. My first section of braiding was seven inches long before I added my first beads. Make sure they're all the same length that I'm using this needle threader to attach my bead, but you can do whatever method you prefer. I'm just sticking it through my threader and then pulling it through. Makes it just a little bit easier if you can't get that yarn through the hole if your hole isn't big enough for whatever reason and then I'm just very carefully braiding around it I'll be able to adjust the bead if it kind of turns to the side whatever that's fine I'm just tightly braiding around it to make sure it stays in place and then I'll clamp it off when I'm done that little section underneath I ended up doing four inches so there I go <laughs> there we go braiding my four inches in between and I'm doing that on all three and then I'll add my next bead and braid four more inches down. And this is just, I mean, this is just what I did. It doesn't have to be exact. You can add more beads, less beads, more space, whatever you want. So now I have three beads with in between the two beads, it's four inches. And then I'm braiding another seven inches down on all three. And that's actually gonna be the last of the braiding. I'm just gonna take each of these ends and wrap them around themselves and tie a knot, trying to be very careful that they are all at the same length. So you can kind of push it around, just do it very lightly at first and kind of comparing them there, making sure they're all the exact same length. Then you're gonna separate each section into two and I would recommend doing this kind of hanging above you. Whichever portions lie next to each other, you're gonna measure about seven inches down again, and then make sure you're tying a knot. So these lie next to each other, and then these two lie next to each other. So I have three knots. And then at this point, I'm going to grab a planter that's gonna be similar to the size that I want. 
and I'm going to go another four inches down and put the ones that are next to each other and tie a knot, making sure they're four. Nothing has to be totally perfect about this. I'm just kind of eyeballing everything. And again, this is a little bit easier if you're like, if you've got like a, a hook in your bathroom that you put your towels on, I would like hang it on that hook and do it from there. And then I did another four inch section and I'm going to put the planter in, see how I want it and then I'm tying it off right where I want it. And then I went about another five inches down and cut off the end. And here's the result. That white one I also made with the same technique. It just doesn't have beads. I love this. I think this is, in my opinion, way easier than macrame. And I always have yarn sitting around. So I think this is absolutely perfect. This is the third plant hanger I've made with this technique and I'll probably be making more. These are super functional and a great way to use up old yarn. White ones were even easier because I just braided the whole way down and then tied some knots. They barely took any time at all. And again, you can do whatever colors you want. And with the beads, you can really get fun and experimental. You can do star-shaped beads, round beads, square beads, whatever you want. You can get really, really creative and colorful in comparison to macrame, which is traditionally just in that like neutral beige color. I still love macrame though. No hate to macrame. It is, it just tends to be more expensive. And I just, I don't always have the cord on hand. Since we're on the topic of plants, I also used some yarn to mix up an old pot. This was such an easy DIY and had such a huge impact. When I posted the kind of behind the scenes on my Instagram, I got so many DMs with people loving it. I think it could be super versatile and again, super easy. Here's how I did it. First, you'll start with a planter of any size and some yarn. I like how this yarn really complements this planter. I feel like it's got like specks of the light peach in it. And then I grabbed my hot glue gun and I am going to begin draping this yarn. I want to make sure it's nice and low because I am going to add another drape a little bit higher. I ended up doing three drapes around the whole planter and I just cut off the end. Now you can do this a bunch of ways. You can keep it connected or you can cut each piece individually. Totally up to you. But I started doing smaller ones as well. So I just started gluing them on the inside of these drapes and I ended up cutting individual pieces for this. It was a little bit easier and and I was just hot gluing them. The hot glue stays really, really well, but you can see there's maybe about an inch of space in between. And then I did a third one a little bit higher. And then I grabbed this gold chain that I got from the craft store and I cut three of these pieces. It's a little bit harder to work with, so I thought that might be easier to cut them in advance and I just glued them on with just a tiny bit of hot glue. You can see it's attached. I kind of pull it from the side and glue it on. And I just thought this would add another cool element. It's definitely not necessary. It's not yarn, but I think it really modernizes the yarn, I guess. And then to make the top look nice and finished, I added some yarn along the top and cut it off. And I think it looks so cool. I feel like it's like, modern gothic and really elegant it takes this pot from just totally normal to really interesting to look at what i love about this pot is i've never really seen one quite like it i would really love to do this on a large pot and really take it to the next level you could do a ton of different layers of yarn i just think this could be so so cool this last DIY was inspired by a wall hanging I saw at Urban Outfitters for $100. I used some upcycled yarn, obviously, and fabric that I already had, so mine cost me nothing. It depends on what materials you have. I always have yarn, obviously, <laughs> and fabric lying around, so mine didn't cost me anything, but I still think you would be able to get all of these materials for way cheaper than $100. This one was a little bit time consuming. I ended up doing a latch hook rug method. Uh, I feel like it's kind of like an older technique. I haven't done it since I was like 10 years old, but it was so much fun to whip out the materials and it was super, super satisfying. I love the way this one turned out. Again, super customizable. Here's how I did it. For this project, you're gonna need a grid for latch hooking and a latch hook 
You can also get some latch hooking yarn, which is specifically cut at this length. This is kind of what it looks like, but I'm gonna be creating my own. Obviously, I'm using a piece of some old grid, but you can buy some new as well. I'll link some below. I created an oval pattern and they're about 5.5 inches wide. And I just traced my template and then set that aside and I'm getting ready to make my yarn. I'm just using regular basic acrylic yarn and something round. I'm using this pink container that's about two inches wide. I taped the yarn on and then I'm going to wrap it around. I wanna make sure I'm not overlapping. I want them all to be the same length. So I'm trying not to overlap. And then I'm going to very, very carefully slide it off and then cut it into two equal sections. So I'm carefully putting it around my finger and then flipping it around the other way. These won't be exactly perfect, but it's definitely good enough for what we're doing. And you can always trim it at the end. This is the amount I landed with and it was about enough for two. So you probably want to double that amount. And I would say each circle took about two. And then we're ready to latch hook. You're going to want to loop your yarn around and then slide your hook through. And then this little lever is going to come up and you're going to slide your yarn through from the left to the right. So I'm putting my yarn around, going through the hoop, and then as I pull down, that little lever is gonna push up and I'm gonna go in between the lever and the hook and that's gonna be able to pull it through. I'll show you again, slowly, and then pull it through. Now this is not the only technique you can do for this. You could also do punch needling if you know how to punch needle, which I do not. I've tried multiple times, <laughs> it's really hard, but this uh, this worked for me. And then you're gonna take your scissors and very carefully cut it out. You wanna make sure you're getting as close as possible without cutting the rung that each one is attached to. So just be careful and then you're gonna fluff it out and here's the finished result. You'll do this three more times and again, cut them all out. And then I got ready to do my tassels. I'm just gonna wrap this around my hand. You could wrap it around a circle like you did before, like a, a bigger paint tube or whatever. I'm wrapping around my hand each one 20 times and then I'm cutting another piece and I go through that loop, tying that and that's going to be the very top of my tassel. And then I'll cut another piece of string that I'm going to tie around the top. This is gonna kind of mark off the, the head of my tassel and I'm double knotting both of these. As of right now, it's still a loop and I slide my scissors through that loop and cut it to make it nice and flat. And then you can flatten it out and trim it or you can trim them all at the end once they're all glued on and like hanging on the wall. But I made nine of these. Next, you're gonna get a piece of fabric that's about 10 inches wide and 23 inches tall here it's sideways and then this is actually like a piece of canvas and I'm painting it but you can just get any scrap of fabric you can do this with any colors you want I'm trying to kind of recreate the one that is from Urban Outfitters but you can do whatever colors you want it doesn't have to be this yellow color because you can see through the rug a little bit I decided to go back with this beigey color that's similar to the yarn and do these circles so when you look through you can't really see the, the dark yellow as much. And then I took my hot glue gun and glued it on. Once they're glued, you can kind of adjust the yarn and trim it however you need to. And then I flipped it over and I'll be attaching the tassels on the back side. I'm using those two long pieces that I used to tie that very top part so they can be behind it and I'm not having to like glue that ball on. It's just a little bit easier. I ran some hot glue over it as well. And then I trimmed those long pieces off and then I am just going to use a piece of string for this top part. The original has kind of like an arch, but it's just so much easier with the string and I'm just folding a loop over. And because this fabric is kind of flimsy, I'm stabilizing it with a little bit of cardboard. And to make the trim feel a little bit more luxurious, I'm using more yarn from my hand to kind of add a top and bottom trim just to make it a little bit fancier. The original had it on the sides, but I opted for the top and the bottom. And I think it turned out great. It feels really, really unique. And I do think it feels luxurious and yeah, I'm obsessed. This was a bit time consuming, but I think it was totally worth it. I would definitely do it again. I feel like this project turned out really, really great for not costing me anything. And it kind of makes me want to get back into latch hooking again. So stay tuned on that one. 
I might try it. That is it for all of my DIYs. Thank you so much for watching. There's still a ton of yarn left, so I'll probably make more of these. Let me know if you like this style of content. And if you ever try any of my DIYs, please tag me or DM me. I love, love seeing when you guys recreate my DIYs. It like makes my day week and life. So please, please tag me. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, TikTok, subscribe here, all of that fun stuff. Thank you so, so much for watching and happy making.